Hello guys and welcome on back to She's Diabetic. For those of you who are new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I have been a type 1 diabetic for over 19 years and this is just a channel all about my life with type 1 diabetes. Some things I do that work, some things I do that sometimes don't work. <laughs> Mental health, body positivity, all of that good stuff. So welcome if you are new here and welcome back if you are returning. For today's video, I wanted to make a video about a concept that has hands down probably been the best thing to aid in my control of my type 1 diabetes and that is the idea of pre-bolusing. Now I'm going to start way at the beginning in case you guys aren't familiar with that because I'm really conscious that sometimes on this channel I use lingo that may not be something people know about. And the most, most, most important thing, the thing I want to do most with this channel is to spread awareness of things that I've come in contact with in the healthcare sense or just by chance that have really helped make my life with type 1 diabetes significantly better. And I can say without a shadow of a doubt, pre-bolusing is one of those things. So to start us all out and so that we're all on the same page, I'm going to take the definition from the My Sugar website, which is a brilliant website. I'll link it down below and I'll link specifically this article where they talk about pre-bolusing in case you're interested in checking it out. So My Sugar defines pre-bolusing as taking your meal bolus X amount of minutes before eating to better match your insulin's peak action time with your meal's digestion. Think of it as giving the insulin a head start in the race against the food digesting and raising your blood sugar. So now that we know what pre-bolusing is, why is it so helpful? For me personally, I've found it so helpful because before when I used to take my insulin and eat exactly at the same time, I would see a spike in my post-meal blood sugar and I had carb counted correctly, I had done, you know, all the things I thought I was supposed to do, but still I was seeing this spike. So once I started noticing this, I, I started Googling, asking other people, how do you deal with these post-meal spikes? How does anyone not have these? And then I got introduced to the concept of pre-bolusing, and I started kind of experimenting with that and found that once I found my sweet spot in terms of those amount of minutes before a meal to take my insulin, I was flattening those spikes for the most part. It's not perfect, of course, not all the time can we get those flat, flat lines, but it sure was giving me a great assistance. So that brings me on to the next question, and that is how do you find how many minutes before a meal you should bolus? How do you find that, that X time period? Well, I can't help you here. It's all very, very personal. It's really, really something that you should discuss with your doctor. For me personally, I started with a 10 minute pre-bolus and I just experimented. I mostly did my experimentation before breakfast because that's almost the same every single day. So there was a little bit of control aspect to the experimentation period there, which we know is difficult to come by with type 1 diabetes. But yeah, I just started trying it out and I did 10 minutes for like a week, then I did 15 minutes and I just started playing around. I found for me, my pre-bolus is generally around the 15 to 20 minute mark, but that can depend on a lot of factors as with everything in type 1 diabetes. So it's important you try this out at different times. But I think the great thing about pre-bolusing is as long as you don't do it too long before a meal and go low, it really can only benefit you. So even if you're starting out and you're doing maybe a shorter time period than ultimately what your body is going to end up wanting and working for you, it's still going to help flatten that curve a little bit, which is, you know, win from the off, I think. The other thing that will affect your timing is what type of insulin you're on. There's more slower acting insulins, there's more faster acting insulins, and then there are super duper fast acting insulins. So you've really got to kind of assess which insulin you're on and what the manufacturer says that that time frame is going to be. And then I think that's a good jumping off point to sort of start your experimentation. And also for me, I found it depends on the carbohydrate content or the glycemic load 
of the meal you're about to consume. So if it's a super low carb meal, you might not need as long of a pre-bolus time as if say you're about to eat a big old plate of pasta. And of course, as with everything too, it depends on where you're starting. So if you're starting super high, for example, if you've just, you're running high, maybe you want a little bit longer to see that come down a bit and then go into your meal. Whereas if you're starting super low, this is not the time to pre-bolus. You need to act now to get your blood sugar up to a safe place. So though I can't tell you what your pre-bolus time is, I can tell you that your doctor should be able to help. And once you start experimenting, a lot of things start making a lot of sense. And I do have to say this, it is way easier to figure out your pre-bolus time and see the effects when you're on a continuous glucose monitor. And I know I stand in a place of privilege in that I am on the Dexcom G6. I am part of their warrior program here in the UK. So my Dexcom is very generously gifted to me. And therefore I have access to a graph that gives me readings every five minutes to show me when my blood sugar is starting to turn the corner and come down and therefore I'm ready to eat. So utilizing your CGM if you have one is very, very important. However, it's not like you can't pre-bolus if you don't have a CGM. It just makes it a little easier because you have more data to go off of. So an example of how I might utilize a pre-bolus is I wake up in the morning, I know I'm gonna eat within 15 to 20 minutes. I know my breakfast is gonna contain 25 grams of carbohydrate. So I will dial that up on my insulin pump as soon as I wake up. I'll make my bed, I'll do, you know, whatever bits I have to do in the morning. I'll even set an alarm. You can even set an alarm like with these phones and Alexa and all the rest of it. You can say, hey, set an alarm for 15 minutes or whatever. And then once that timer goes off, you eat. That's just a real life example of how I would implement it. And then for a meal that I would have seen a post meal spike on, I see a relative flattening or maybe just a little bump up and a flattening out if it's a good day, <laughs> uh, of my blood sugar because I've taken that pre-bolus action. And that's pretty much it. That's all I wanted to tell you guys. I just really wanted to express this to you because this is something that actually no doctor ever talked to me about. I've had doctors since I've come to know the concept talk to me about it since, so to be fair. But when I was younger, when I was dealing with these things, I never had a doctor introduce this concept to me. And it would have been so, so helpful. And I just wanted to share it with you guys in case you hadn't been introduced to the concept or in case you were curious about it. And the great thing is you don't need to be on an insulin pump to utilize this. You can be on injections and utilize this a-okay. So it's kind of accessible for all, which I really, really like. And last but certainly not least, be patient. As you're figuring this out, if you have some hurdles along the way and some frustrations, know that that is totally, totally, totally normal. And it's not going to be a perfect two plus two equals four every day of the week, every time you do this, because that's not how diabetes works, is it? But I think with patience, with collaboration from your doctor, and also just remaining curious and analyzing the facts, taking blood sugars pre and post meal, looking at your CGM graph, you know, really remaining curious and taking in the cold hard facts. I think you can really, really get to grips with this quite quickly and it can make a massive, massive difference to your numbers. At least it has for me. So with that being said, I really hope this helped you guys. If you're familiar with the concept of pre-bolusing, let me know down below. If it's something you do all the time, let me know down below. If it's something that you don't do and this is totally new to you, certainly let me know down below. I'd be so curious as to how commonly known this concept is. Because like I said, I never had it introduced to me and it's been such a massive help to my overall health that I kind of can't believe it's not like the first thing I was told. So yeah, let me know down below. I wish you guys a wonderful, wonderful day wherever you are in this world. I wish you straight CGM lines, correct boluses and pre-boluses, all of that good, good stuff. But most of all, and most importantly, I wish you a happy, healthy mind with it all. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.